I am glad to see everyone's faces. Now it's, nope. All right, I'm going to change microphones during the meantime. So, uh, let us stand and greet each other this morning as we can tell us that you hear the music, please find your seat and join us. One, two. There it is. It's there.
People of God, do not be afraid, for your Savior is coming. Riding on a donkey, daring to raise the branches of liberation. Shout your hosannas in the street and in the sanctuary. Hosanna in the highest, our Savior has come to set us free. Palm branches and praise mark this day with hope. Hosanna, come and save us. Humble God, you have shown us the way to enter all the Jerusalems of this world. You showed us not to enter our lives with fear, but with humility and courage. As we worship this day, we draw upon your example of Jesus on that humble donkey, and we raise our palm branches in rejoicing. We raise our voices, shouting along with your people of every age, Hosanna in the highest. Come and save us this day, O Jesus of Jerusalem. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the kids up for children's time. And there's three of them. That's perfect. This is going to work out great. Nope, don't sit down. Stand up. We're standing today. All right, who wants the first brunch? There you go. Miles, well, you going to help, bud? Okay. So, today is what day? Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday, not Palm Letters. Paper Sunday, what is this? Yeah, that's not supposed to be in there. All right, it's Palm Sunday. What happens on Palm Sunday? So Jesus fell on his head and he went on the donkey and people were yelling, Hosanna in the highest, and they said to him, Tell him that he's coming and that everybody's coming to him. Okay, so somebody tell Teresa that she's doing a great job teaching the kids about Sunday, Palm Sunday, because that was right. So Jesus comes and people put their cloaks or clothes down on the ground, and those who don't have anything to put on the ground, they grab branches and they put that on the ground, right? Now, when they come down, when they're follow, when Jesus comes down, do they just stand there? No. What do they say? Hosanna in the highest, right? Okay. And then, do they stay there once Jesus passes them? What do you think happens? They follow, right? So they put all these things in the middle of the eye, in the middle of the road, and then Jesus walks, rides through on a donkey, and then the people follow along. It's a, it's a cult, right? So, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these palm branches and we're going to put them on the aisle here from one side to the other. But I want you to leave a little bit of space because if you don't leave a little bit of space, these palm branches, when they're just a little bit of wet, it's really slick and I don't want anybody to fall, okay? So we're going to, the, the, you guys are going to cover the aisle here, but don't make it so that it's too slick for people to walk on, Okay. All right, and I'll help you. So you guys go ahead and do that. <laughs> so kind of space them out a little bit. And what do you think Hosanna means? Why do they shout that? Um, I think it's like supposed to mean like Jesus is coming. I don't know. Okay. What do you think, Silas? Oh. Okay. You're a little bit of a guess. <laughs> So they shout Hosanna because it's, it's something they sing when it's, say when it's joyous time, right? Right? So they say that when they're shouting for joy, okay? But in the old time, Hosanna meant save us, okay? So they were saying, Hosanna, Jesus, save us, is what they were saying. And they used to say that to the kings all the time, right? That looks great, guys. Okay, so... So Jesus comes to actually save us, not a king who's just trying to do something, right? So Jesus comes and is one that can actually do something for us. So let's pray right quick, and you guys can go back to your seats. Gracious God, we thank you that you came triumphal on a donkey and brought peace to a nation that was so afraid of war. Gracious God, we ask that you bring that peace to us today. We ask that you save us. We shout Hosanna in the highest as we shout for joy and hope and prayer all at the same time. 
Gracious God, bless us this day as we sing our hosannas loud. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join me in a prayer of confession this morning. God of our hosannas, it would be all too easy to embrace a vision of you entering Jerusalem with all the pomp and circumstance and violence that power provides. And yet, that is not your way. And we confess that we often whisper with the ways of fear rather than shout our liberation for all people. Help us to lay our lives at your feet and welcome you with shouts of joy. Amen. Dear ones, I want you to embrace this word with courage. Leave your fear behind, for it does not have the last word, and it does not have to be the donkey you ride in on. God offers you the way of hope, the way of humility, the way of hosannas. Rest in the assurance that you are forgiven and embraced in God's tender arms of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join me in our next song, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 216. Our psalm reading today is Psalm 118, 1 through 2, and 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. 
the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. I invite those who are able to com comfortably able to stand. Listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have two gospel readings this morning, and they are quite long, so if you need to sit, please do. From Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage in Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead of them and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, number, numbers 1 through 39. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to, used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was a prisoner and was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, then what do you wish me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, king of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spit on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. 
Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two rebels, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Elo, Elo, Lama, Samalathahin, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled the sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it was done in this way that he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. Here ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So I wonder if this has ever happened to you, not the, not the scripture, this story. You're working at an event and you plan and you plan, then it comes time to have the event and everything goes absolutely perfect except for what you planned. But somehow, by some miracle, everything in the event went perfectly even though what you planned didn't work. People come up to you and tell you it was an amazing event and you stand there dumbfounded because everything you did in your eyes didn't seem to work. But by accident, everything went perfectly. Or maybe it's the other side of the coin. Maybe you planned an event and you just planned and planned and everything went exactly as you planned. Even the reactions of the people there were exactly what you planned. People come up to you afterwards, did you plan that to happen? And you say, yeah, I knew exactly what was going to happen. Have you ever had events like that in your life? Times like that? I, I don't think I can say I've had one that went absolutely perfect all the time. In fact, I, I quite often make a statement that I say, it, I make plans, and God laughs. Because my plans never seem to work out, but God gets it right. But that brings me to the question that is endlessly debated about our scriptures this morning by scholars. Was the entry into Jerusalem accidental or planned? Did Jesus one day decide to make a trip into Jerusalem and a spontaneous parade broke out as they knew he was coming? Or was this day deliberately chosen and planned out to make a statement at a specific time? A time when it is believed that another ruler was entering Jerusalem from the other side of the city, one with earthly authority, not godly authority. The truth is we may never really know, but what we do know is that this Jesus that's throughout the Gospel of Mark spent the entire first part of the gospel telling people, don't say anything. Don't tell anybody who I am. Keep it a secret. 
And now, all of a sudden, there's a big announcement to be made. All of a sudden, he's here. It may, makes me think about some movies that I watch, and especially hero movies, when the hero is not told something about himself that's really important until the right moment. The best example I can think of that is Harry Potter. But it happens in a lot of hero movies. Or maybe the hero knows something that everybody else doesn't and is not going to reveal it until the right moment when they can accept it. That happens in a lot of movies. A lot of mystery movies have that as well. Here Jesus says, it's time to reveal the secret of who I am. But I believe many have already guessed. He rides this colt into the city of Jerusalem. And his followers walk behind him and shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I think that's a dead giveaway of who's coming. When you have people shouting, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. I also don't believe that these were random acts either. I don't believe this was accidental. See, when a king goes off to war, he rides a big war horse and he proclaims himself the Lord and ruler of the people. Jesus arrives riding a donkey, an unridden colt, proclaiming himself Prince of Peace, not King. The words that are spoken come from one of the enthronement psalms when and it's used when a new king is coming to power. The original text comes from a psalm that says, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. It's talking about worshiping David. Shouting for joy for David, one of the best kings Israel thought they ever had. Hosanna in the highest heavens. It looks to me like a real slap in the face of those who thought they were in charge. A declaration of authority and power and peace in a place of power and authority that saw him as an outsider. He is not one of us. How did it dare does he say he's the Prince of Peace? It's like the best prank ever pulled. The ones who appeared powerless. The one who everybody thought was nobody is the one who is declared king of kings by all the people. What a, what a trick. The one who rode into a war zone with the authorities out for his blood is the one they say is the true king of kings the true prince, prince of peace. And they shout, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. It was a common word used in the royal psalms. It's found throughout all of the psalms. Most folks understood it to be a statement of celebration, a shout of joy and welcome, and it was. But as I told the kids, it was originally translated to mean, save us. Save us. Save us, David. Hosanna. Save us. For they would shout this for the leader. And the crowds would shout, save us, to the one who was more often than not concerned more about his own safety and prosperity than the people. And now they shout Hosanna to the one who can actually save them, but not in the way that they think, not in the way they have expected and longed for their entire lives. They are going to be saved in a different way. And they shout Hosanna to the one who can save them. And I see the crowds in my mind, and I see the people following Jesus and I see that most of the city is still missing. 
I'm not even sure most of the city knows what's going on. See, when we lift our palms and wave them on this Sunday morning, we declare our allegiance to the Prince of Peace, to God, to Jesus, to the, to the very one the world would consider a fool and did its best to destroy. And perhaps we are fools. Perhaps we are fools for being part of this parade, for remembering this death. But on the other hand, sometimes the fools turn out to be the ones who are truly wise. They sense something different. Maybe a better description is to acknowledge that the world resists being turned upside down. Or at least it won't stay that way for long. The powers and principalities of this world always seem to come rushing back in to put things back in order as they understand it. To restore it as they think it ought to be. This is how things should be, says the world. Jesus says, nope. Peace is how it should be. Love is how it should be. This is also why I think it's important that we realize today is not just Palm Sunday. Whenever we see Palm Sunday often portrayed in words, it's Palm slash Passion Sunday. And the two scriptures I read are why that is distinguished that way. You have the triumphal entry into Jerusalem and you have the passion of Jesus. The, the struggle. The beating. And I believe that slash is important. Because it's there to remind us that there's risk involved in taking the side of the marginalized. There's danger in trying to upset the status quo. Just when you think you've won your point and gathered your crowd and got all the people together, you discover you're alone again. At least that was Jesus' Holy Week experience. From the parade to the way of sorrows. From the Prince of Peace riding on a donkey to a hated criminal hanging on a cross. From Hosanna to crucify Him in a matter of days. Who's the fool? Maybe it's still us for clinging to hope in a hopeless world. Maybe it's us for embracing life in a world obsessed with death. Maybe it's us. Or maybe it's Him proclaiming Easter joy in a Good Friday world. Maybe but I will still wave my palm branches and shout my hosannas through all of it. Call it foolish if you want, but I'd rather be a fool for Christ than anybody else. See, I believe that what happened that Palm Passion Sunday so many years ago teaches us that the journey forward is rejoicing in peace, is rejoicing in love, rejoicing in compassion and in hope, I do not believe Jesus was weeping as He entered Jerusalem. I look at Jesus entering Jerusalem and I see Him sitting on a donkey, head held high, and I believe He's smiling. See, I think He's smiling because He has seen the followers. He has seen them line the roads. And He realizes they have finally started to get it. Three years of pushing His message and they're finally starting to get it. Three years of Him working as best He could for them to understand that God loves them and they're finally starting to get it. Yes, I think Jesus was smiling that day. But I also know that in the back of His mind, He knows the struggle is on Him. The time has come. But at that moment, he could hold his head high and look at those people who chose God over the world. We remember and we rejoice at the triumphal entry because we are not Good Friday people. 
We are Easter morning people. We are empty tomb people. We are a resurrected Jesus people. And I will be a fool for that all the days of my life. And I believe you will be too. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join me in our next song, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, number 213. As we prepare for our time of prayer this morning, we hold tight to hope, peace, joy, and love because we know what is coming. We know there are many things to rejoice this day, but we remember that this is the start of Holy Week. And we must make it through to reveal and revel in the joy of the other side of the empty tomb. But our world is full of things that hold us back and cause us to stumble, so we go to God with our concerns. We ask for peace and safety around the world. We ask that our service members and their families be cared for this day. We lift by name those who we know need God's care. People like Cheryl Gorin and Dorothy Bridgeforth, and June Mitchell and Bill Malina, Jody and Larry Cox and Janice Comer, Rebecca Catlin and Jim and Judy Cordy, Logan and Zoe Valley, and we added Andrea Mintz, the mother of Hudson Lee Mintz, who's uh, Laverne Locks's granddaughter and great-grandson, uh, because she needed to be watched after having birth, and she is fine. She is home, so we rejoice in that. We, had, we added Paul Sterrett, so we continue to pray for him. And this morning, we add the entire Sterrett family to our prayers in the passing of Paul's mother, Barbara, who passed away yesterday morning. So we pray for the whole family. This week we lift the following churches, Biddleborn Trinity UCC, Reverend Tara Vopel, and Breeze St. John UCC. We actually are also adding St. George Catholic Church to our prayers this week as they work towards recovery from a, the kitchen fire that happened last week. Fortunately, there were no injuries, but damage was done 
to the kitchen area, so we pray for the church as they start to rebuild that area. Would you join me in prayer? Jesus, you set your face toward Jerusalem and walked alongside those who suffer. Be our vision that we too may walk the way of compassion and extend a hand to those we meet. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Lord, you stop to heal the sick and tend to those broken in body, mind, or spirit. Be our vision that we too may be a source of healing to all in need of your grace. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Jesus, you said the first shall be last and the last first. Be our vision that we too may work toward your realm when the marginalized and the oppressed will be raised up and know that they are indeed beloved children of the Holy One. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love, answer. Jesus, you took the time to pray and to be silent. Be our vision that through our prayers, through our meditation and reflection, we may draw closer to you and find our way on this journey of faith. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Lord, you enter Jerusalem with peace in your heart. Be our vision that we too can live as people of peace in the face of this world's many conflicts. May we hold your vision of justice and peace ever before us. Lord, hear our, our prayer, and in your love, answer. Bless us, Holy One, as we enter into those days ahead of us. We will need your power and presence to sustain us as we move through these difficult days together. Spirit of love and life, stay close to us, we pray. These and all the prayers of our hearts we offer in faith as we pray the way you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare for our time of communion this morning, you will be invited to con to join in in the liturgy, which is in the bulletin, or in the hymnal, which is on page 16, option A, if you so choose. You'll be invited during our time of communion to also come forward and receive communion or receive a blessing. Please be aware that the palms are slick when they are wet. We have red wine and white grape juice in our cups this morning. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome. All are invited to come. Let us prepare our hearts for communion as we sing our song.
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving bread. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Eternal God who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gift of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your own image and for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim on us and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten by you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We remember Christ's death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection. And in the beloved community of your church, we await Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer you our praise for women and men of faith in every age who stand as witnesses to your love and justice. With all the prophets, martyrs, and saints, and all the company of heaven, we glorify you, saying, Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread and lifted it up and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. And after blessing the cup, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection and await Christ's coming again. Amen. Come, Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we may be salt and light and leaven for the furtherance of your will in all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. As you come forward today, remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and imagine yourself walking behind Christ. Please come. The body of Christ broken for you.
Would you join me in our prayer of thanksgiving this morning? Eternal God, You have called Your people from east and west, from north and south, to feast at the table of Jesus Christ. We thank You for Christ's presence and for the spiritual food of Christ's body and blood. By the power of Your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful to Your will. Go with us to the streets, to our homes, and to our places of labor and leisure, that whether we are gathered or scattered, we may be the servant church of the servant Christ, in whose name we rejoice to pray. Amen. Good morning and happy Palm Sunday. We have several announcements to share with everyone. A brief reminder that the Ecumenical Lenten service is this Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m. at the First Baptist Church of New Baden. Everyone is welcome to attend. Join us for our Holy Week services this upcoming Thursday and Friday, March 28th and 29th. We will be having a special foot washing style service on Monday, Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m., followed by a tenebrae service on Good Friday, March 29th, also at 7 p.m. We would love to have you join us for either or both of these meaningful services. Everyone is welcome. Easter Sunday services will be on March 31st at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. In between services, there will be an Easter breakfast and an Easter egg hunt. For anyone who is interested in attending the breakfast or Easter egg hunt, sign-up slips are located in the pews or out in the gathering space. Please place the filled out sign-up slips, sign slips in the offering plate. Thank you. Our offering plate is in the back. The laying down of palm branches in the street is an expression of hope of God among a desperate people. Today we are invited to lay down our treasures as an outpouring of our gratitude for God's act of salvation in Jesus Christ. So let us give with the shouts of hosannas on our lips this morning. Would you join me as we pray for our offering? God of the great shouts of hope, just as you received the voices of the crowd upon your entry into Jerusalem, receive these gifts as an expression of our joy and gratitude. Take our voices and our offerings to use them to proclaim your salvation to all people. Amen. Now I invite you, if you are comfortably able, to please stand and join me for our closing song, This Is the Day. Number 84.
So a reminder, there are about five services this week so that you know where you're supposed to be or want to be. Let's go over them one more time. The ecumenical service is at the First Baptist Church in New Baden at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. The Monday Thursday service here, 7 o'clock, is a foot washing style service. What that means is we are going to do a foot washing service, but we're not going to use our feet because some people, like my wife, have problems with people touching their feet. <laughs> so we are going to wash hands instead of feet. <laughs> Friday is a good Friday, will be a tenebrae service with our normal tenebrae selection of readings. And then Sunday, of course, is Easter morning where we will have two services with breakfast and an Easter egg hunt in between services. So please be where you are called to be, where God wants you to be this week. Now, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and light your path. Until we meet again, go in the love and grace of God. Amen and amen.